لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد فإن, أحدث فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار <coughs> Brahim ibn Adham a prominent Muslim scholar and worshipper one day he saw a man in stress and misery and sadness so he said to him I will ask you three questions I want from you the answer. He said to the man, he said to the man, first question, is anything in this world or in this universe beyond the power and control of Allah? The man said, no. Question number two, do you think your wealth would be less then that Allah decided, the man said, no. Question number three, do you think you will die a second or a moment before the day that Allah has decided you will die? The man said, no. Then Ibrahim Adham looked at him, then why are you sad and stressed and worried? This is the discipline that our ancestors and forefathers had from the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Imam ibn al-Qayyim, look at the way he looks at things and the way he talks to the people and the mood, you know, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad and our ancestors ever so forth. He said, come on, think of yourself entering paradise and you will be the neighbor of Allah Almighty and his neighbor in Dar salam in paradise the place where everything is provided to you. You are, then he talks to us, you are between two brackets of time. One of them is the future, the other one is your past. What has happened in the past, you can correct with repentance and guilt towards the wrongful action and asking Allah for forgiveness. And that requires no effort. And the other segment is the future that you can correct by not doing things that will anger Allah and proper persistence in following the commands of Allah and the good intentions to follow what Allah had told you to do. And in both phases of time in your life, it does not require any physical action. It's only mental intentions that you can fix your past and you can fix your future. He said the pivotal point and the critical point between your past and your future is the moment of now that you are living in that decides the outcome of your future and your past. That is the one that you should always focus on. The same discipline has carried over. Rabbi al adawiyya one of the Muslim worshippers, she was known to wake up during the night from her bed and she would say, for how long could you accept sleeping so much time? It's time to wake up, there is no time to sleep. Listen, and she talks to herself, the day will come that you will sleep and you will never wake up until the day of judgment. And then we go back to the persistence of the Prophet Muhammad When he used to propagate Islam in Mecca, when he propagated Islam, his uncle Abu Lahab was chasing him everywhere. And in front of all of the people he would say, I am his uncle and he is a liar. And then the Prophet Muhammad goes to another place, to the marketplaces in Mecca. 
ذي المجاز مجنة وأنت عكاظ and he says to the people say لا إله إلا الله تفلحوا say لا إله إلا الله and you shall succeed and all throughout that time Abu Lahab chases him and tells the people that he is a liar and you could imagine that it reached to a level that Abu Lahab took it also sad and started throwing it, throwing it on the face of the Prophet Muhammad and the Prophet Muhammad neglected him totally because he is focused in that moment at time and is persistent to follow the commands of Allah and to make use of every minute in his lifetime without any interruptions. Yahya ibn Mu'ad. He used to sell all of so he's one of the Muslim scholars. He used to tell his followers and his students who was, who was around him. He said, you know, there are times when I feel that I am slipping or I am weak and I see myself, you know, my momentum is slowing down. And I say to myself, listen, are you willing to sell heaven for a few seconds of wrongful pleasure? Is it worth it to sell paradise? for a few seconds of haram and that awakens that moment in him and last when Abu Ishaq al-Jibniyati died they found under his bed and his bed was made it was a mattress from straw as they used that times they, he, they saw a piece of paper folded under his bed that he kept as a reminder and in, said, in it it said a man stood up then he said to me get your act together you shall soon die this is a practice our forefathers and ancestors had whenever one of them saw a certain statement hadith or something that reminded him and shook him, he wrote it down in a piece of paper and he kept it in his pocket or under his bed or in his sleeves at that time or some of them they engraved it in the ring in order whenever they look at the ring they remind they reminded themselves of a certain statement that really shook them up and made them capitalize on the moment they are living in because they know based on it the decision of your future is is based on, on that and it will be also in the past once that moment passes it was per, part of their practice الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعه بإحسان ونديه You have noticed I've selected for, for you several characters and personalities in Islam from different eras and age and you could notice that they all have the same discipline This is true and this is something that does not require any thinking because it is way based on the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad and the discipline of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad So no one is surprised for 1,400 1, years the same behavior carries over generations after generations. The factor is, I'm going to tell you now five points that can help you and me follow and behave in the same principle. The first one, knowledge. The knowledge requires from you and me to be always reading about the Prophet Muhammad and the behavior of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad and our history of Islam as a daily reading, no, no, no matter how much you read but the learning curve has to be there all the time because the flow information as I'm giving you now and you have noticed some of you it really clicked in your mind some factors it requires that you keep on searching and reading this helps you to regenerate that focus and thought Second thing, the knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah. Your daily reading of the Quran should not just be reading, but reading the tafsir of that verse you read that day. Perhaps there will be a light point that will awaken you from the inside and will keep you awake, focusing on the command of Allah until you meet Allah Almighty. So knocking on the door, eventually the door will open and you will see guided in the sake of Allah. Three. What happens in the hereafter? 
Many of us have a vague image based on information they heard so many years ago, what happens to the person when he dies and what happens to the day of judgment, that was what is in heaven, what is in hell. And that information, as it is neglected in your mind for so many years, it deteriorates and the image is not clear. Every one of us should renew that information, reading about heaven, reading about hellfire, getting that focus correct in your eyes that will also, also help you in affecting the moment of now that every minute passes beyond in your hand. Remembering death and what happens that one day, very soon, without any notice, you will die like everybody else. That thing also triggers your focus. Last point, the dua. The dua supplication, asking Allah Almighty for help. The Prophet وسلم, has said, the weakest person is, a, is the person who does not even ask Allah. That is why it is very important as the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to say, Allahumma inni ala dhukrik wa shikrik wa husni ibadik. Every time when you finish the prayer, oh Allah Almighty, give me the support and help and remember you and thanking you, of you, thanking you and worshiping you. That is the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. How do you see us? Now you have noticed where the weaknesses are. I ask Allah Almighty, in these few moments I was able to achieve the points and ask Allah Almighty what I have said, that from this moment, the moment of now, and I remind you in the beginning, the past you can correct by repentance and asking Allah for forgiveness, and the future you can correct by the proper intention and following of command of Allah. It is the moment of now, with these five principles you can focus on and change your life. اللهم اغفر من يمنع المسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك سميع مجيب